Hey everyone, it's World Snake Day, and in order to celebrate this day, I want to get a message out. And that message is that snakes are not aggressive. When pushed, when approached too closely or handled, they can be defensive, but never aggressive. We should completely take that word out of our use when talking about snakes. And to help me prove this point, check this out. A timber rattlesnake right below me. This timber rattlesnake is probably one of the most feared snakes in North America. They are venomous, but as you can see, it has no interest in attacking me and biting me. Um, she's, she's leaving me alone. She's actually hunting. She's got her own thing going on, and unless I really got closer or touched her or did anything else, she's completely content to just sit there and hope I walk on by. So we have another timber rattlesnake right here in front of me. This one is a young male, and same response, nothing. This snake is coiled. It may be hunting, or it may just be kind of basking in the dappled sunlight, but this snake really just wants to stay put. And though I'm not gonna do it because it would be an unnecessary risk, I think if I stepped right on it or next to it, it probably still would react very little, if at all. So if you're a hiker in the woods, there just isn't very much to fear from sort of accidentally getting bitten by one of these snakes because chances are they'll just let you walk on by. We've been studying this population of timber rattlesnakes for going on five years now in order to better understand their movement patterns and habitat use in relation to the history of forest management at this site in southern Ohio. Today, we're capturing these snakes in order to take blood samples that can be used for genetic research in the future. This also gives us the opportunity to showcase just how docile these snakes are, even when we actually attempt to capture them. But keep in mind, I'm highlighting how docile these animals are by showing clips of how we handle them for research, just to put your mind at ease while hiking in the woods so that you know this isn't an animal that will attack you. But they are venomous and they will bite in self-defense and you should never handle one if you see one in the wild. All right, so we have a big male timber rattlesnake here, and this one is actually doing what you expect a rattlesnake to do. And the reason that this snake is rattling at us when others haven't is because when we came upon this snake, he was stretched out, he was moving, and he wasn't coiled and therefore potentially camouflaged. So this is when they react with that rattle where they get a little bit more defensive. But as you can see, the snake is staying away from me. He's only rattling when I make moves that make him a little bit nervous. He isn't making any kind of aggressive movements towards me. And even if I approach a little bit closer, staying at a safe range here, you can see he's just sort of reacting to what I'm doing here. Uh, he's, he's watching me, watching John, the cameraman back there, and, uh, and he's got that rattle, that rattle that's meant to advertise that maybe I'm a bigger, scarier thing than, than you might think. But not aggressive, defensive, and nothing. See, the snake is not going to attack me, I'm keeping well out of the range at which he could actually strike me from, but he's not going to come towards me because he has nothing to gain from charging me, from attacking me. And if I leave right now, the snake will slither away. Contrary to popular belief, rattling is not necessarily a warning that the snake is about to bite a would-be predator, but rather rattling is another defensive mechanism, like its camouflage, that allows it to avoid conflict altogether. Make no mistake though, these snakes will bite and can inject a deadly dose of venom if you harm or handle them. But I want to highlight here that that's their absolute last line of defense and they are extremely reluctant to use it. Even when released, it's obvious that this snake has no interest in biting or attacking us or enacting any kind of revenge for stealing his blood. He just wants to get away and put distance between him and the scary giants. So 
So right in front of me, there is a little copperhead, and I don't know how well you can see it because this little critter is very, very well camouflaged. And that's what copperheads do. They're ambush predators. Their whole life style is built around being camouflaged. And to that, they're very sedentary as ambush predators. And so I would say these are even more docile and retreating snakes than many of the harmless snakes uh, that you find here in North America. Copperheads, like other pit vipers, like to hang out in hollow logs, wood piles, and rock crevices. This is all the more reason to watch where you put your hands when in areas where venomous snakes are known to occur. Like most wild animals, these pit vipers are most likely to bite when they feel exposed and threatened. And few situations must feel as exposed as crossing an open road at night with bright disorienting lights flashing in your face. And it's for this reason that you should never walk around in venomous snake country with sandals or bare feet. Just remember, this snake is only striking in self-defense because it's disoriented and scared. This is not an aggressive snake. Knowing that this is one of the highest stress situations this copperhead can be in, I use these long-handled tongs to keep the snake well away from me while I help it across the road. Once on the other side, the snake still coils defensively and attempts to strike. Only after a little prodding does the snake finally decide to flee into the safety of the forest. Unlike this copperhead, most snakes in North America are harmless and non-venomous. All right, we have a little snake we're helping across the road here. This is a racer. And racers get a really bad reputation for being bitey. But as you can see, I just picked it up to move it off the road. Nothing. It's totally calm, not biting me, not doing anything at all. Uh, and that's just because I very gently picked it up. I'm not restraining it. And it just wants to cross this road. So we're going to go ahead and let it go into this thick stuff so it can live its life and be all right. But let's take a look at what happens when I get in the water and up close and personal with one of the non-venomous snakes that has the worst reputation for being aggressive, bitey, and mean. gentle as I can with it, northern water snake. Look at this, she's beautiful. And I say she because at this size, oops, sorry, hon, she's almost certainly a female. With this species, the females are larger than the males. But the reason I wanted to catch this snake and give you an up close and personal look is because this species of snake is notorious for being aggressive. And you just saw me grab that off the log. Is it being aggressive? In fact, this snake isn't even being defensive. So you can see that reputation is really not deserved. Now, that isn't to say that anybody can go pick up any water snake anywhere and not get bitten, because I guarantee you these will bite in self-defense, but under the right circumstances, they won't even try to bite in self-defense. And part of that's that I'm being very gentle with it. But the other part is that even though it has a bad reputation, this snake is not really naturally an aggressive or mean or bitey animal. They don't want to bite people. Just like the rattlesnakes we looked at earlier in the video, these snakes are purely defensive. They have no interest in biting or hurting people. They just want to be left alone and go about their business. She's beautiful. Snakes are feeling and thinking creatures with lives of their own. They have goals. They're driven by very familiar urges, be it fear or hunger or social needs. And yet we see them as alien creatures that are out to get us not as small, vulnerable things just trying to survive in a harsh world. But I think if we could view them more in this light, 
our outlook on them might be more positive, and the outcomes for their populations and for their survival might be more positive too.